So it doesn't look like much, but this earned over $11,000 on Kickstarter. So this is the bed clamp, and the bed clamp was a very simple product that we actually developed here at Slant 3D about three years ago in order to demonstrate how to make a consumer product and also make a product that had advantages over traditional manufacturing. So the bed clamp is composed of this spout with a lid that comes on and off there, and then this main clamp part of the handle, which actually has a live hinge built into it, which is actually unmanufacturable with any other method. Now this, again, looks like a really simple device, and it is, it is just a clamp. But the reason it's useful and the reason so many people enjoyed it is because if you have a bag somewhere in your home, it might be for coffee grounds or beans or flour or whatever it happens to be, you can just take a thing like this, take the spout, stick it in there, take the bag clamp like so, pop it on there, get it all sealed up inside of there, and then you've got the spout and the bag itself. And now you have put a lid onto your bags. So it's a really handy kind of kitchen item because it makes stuff way more easy to organize rather than cutting off the corner of a cereal bag or having to dump stuff or reach out of a dog food bag. You could just get a hold of these. We ended up having uh, multiple sizes. We had a small, medium, and large. And they were a very popular item because they were something that solved a problem for a lot of people. Keeping bags organized, clean, and tidy was kind of a difficult thing to do. So the Kickstarter ended up raising $11,600 with almost uh, 700 to 1,000 individual bag clamps being sold, which was also an impressive demonstration of the cost advantages of 3D printing at that time. Not only was this part impossible to manufacture at the time because of this hinge, it comes off the machine with that hinge active. There's no post-processing or assembly, which is a huge advantage over traditional ways of manufacturing. But during the Kickstarter, after people saw kind of the initial designs and how it was laid out, they were able to give feedback on the Kickstarter so that we were able to update it. One of the biggest changes we made was making the spout a little bit longer for all of the different kits, which didn't really add any cost and it was a very easy way to get feedback from the Kickstarter and then continue on selling these through retail and wholesale afterwards. So as far as the design of it all, it is a very simple device. We do obviously chamfer the outer edges in order to make sure that all the surfaces are fine. It's printed like this so that all the strength is fine. It is printed with PLA because it's an indoor consumer product, which is also fine. The internal hinge itself has a pin that is printed inside of there, which is, if we were to revisit it, we might do something different, but it's never really been a big issue to have these fail outside of the, the normal failure life of a product that is used like this. A lot of people will get the small blue ones and use them literally for a bag of coffee, which was super easy. The spout itself was a chamfered design where the lid is printed upside down like this with chamfers on the bottom. That way the surface always looks really consistent. You don't have to worry about the first layer kind of deviating. If we were to revisit this, we would probably inwardly dome it so that you just have a single outer ring, kind of like the bottom of the spout itself. The spout, of course, has a chamfered design as well so that you have a really wide inlet inside of the bag so that it's able to expand and grab everything and you don't have things piling up around the spout, um, but also so that it does not pull out of the bag. Though that was also enabled by this interior groove and the groove that matched along here with the spout itself. So there was no way for it to really shift side to side, but we wanted to make sure that that was all very well contained. So the interior uh, scoop, the cone, allowed a lot more stuff to hit it just right so that you could always drain a bag and not have to have like a little diddly amount of dog food or coffee left at the bottom of it all. So the product was very successful and continued to be sold. And Kickstarter was a really good way of doing it because while this was a pretty cheap and affordable product, you never know how many items you actually have. So we didn't know if we needed to produce 10,000 of these or 200 of these, or if nobody would ever care ever. So Kickstarter allowed us to gauge market demand, get feedback from it, and then prove out that the product was actually worth continuing to pursue in other applications. So at Slant 3D, we are a mass production 3D printing company. But in order to do that, we have to give clients advice about what is a good product and what is not. And it would be unfair of us to give that advice without actually having eaten some of our own cooking. So designing these types of products are really good opportunities for us to show neat concepts like the hinge, like the kind of clasping inner part right there, the interior groove, the funneling, the design 
design of the first layer, we use all of our expertise to create a product that is mass producible with 3D printing so that you can make a product that is affordable and is enjoyed by the customers who have it. So the bag clamp was basically that. It was an R&D project that was able to prove itself because it actually got orders. And since it was made with 3D printing, there was no upfront tooling cost, there was no long-term shipping cost, there's no long-term storage cost. If somebody orders these, we print it out and we ship it to them. So it's just a really good demonstration of how to make a consumer product that you can produce hundreds to thousands to even millions of do it affordably and have a product that people really enjoy. And we try to do these on a fairly regular basis. One such product that is actually live on Kickstarter right now is our new batch of massage rollers. We've gone through and designed a consumer massage roller in all kinds of different designs that can currently be purchased on Kickstarter, either to 3D print yourself or to get at your own home that we just wanna show people how to design a really neat, cool aesthetic type of product that is also functional and useful for somebody to have at their desk or at the gym or at home. So if you're watching this video here recently, go ahead and check out the Kickstarter. And if you're watching it a little later in the future, you might just check out Angled.io to actually get the parts itself. Have a great day, everybody.